This is part 6 of the Teardown scripting tutorial, and in this video we'll cover the draw function, which can be used for drawing overlay graphics and user interfaces. Start by defining the draw callback function. Just like the tick function, it's called once per frame. All the API functions starting with UI are only available from the draw callback, so don't try to use them from init or tick. Now let's draw a filled rectangle using the UI rect function. We'll immediately see a white rectangle being drawn to the screen. Note that the UI rect function only takes two parameters, width and height. Any other property must be set up in advance as part of the UI state. For instance, if we want to draw a red rectangle, we have to set the color using UI color before drawing anything. If we want to draw the rectangle at another location, we call the UI translate function before drawing it and so on. The UI state will remain the same until explicitly altered, so if we translate again and draw a second rectangle, that will also be red. It's a very common scenario that you want to alter the UI state, draw something and then go back to the state you had before. And this is what UI push and UI pop are used for. Let's put a UI push in our code before changing the color to red. And then, after drawing the rectangle, we call it UI pop. This will revert all the changes to the UI state that was made in between push and pop. In our case, that means the color will go back to what it was before, so the second rectangle will be drawn in white. It may feel unintuitive at first, but working with the state like this can be very powerful, especially in more complex scenarios. Let's create a simple user interface. In order to draw text, we must first set up a font and size with the UI font function. Once we've done that, we can draw text using the UI text function. Just like UI rect, we cannot specify the position of the text directly, but we can control where it ends up by manipulating the state before drawing the text. In this case, we translate to the center of the screen horizontally and 200 pixels downwards vertically. We can also control the alignment using the UI align function to make it centered. You can read more about the different alignment options in the API documentation. Let's also add an interactive button. The Teardown UI system uses an immediate mode UI paradigm, which means that UI elements like buttons and sliders don't need to be created on beforehand. You just call the function which will put a button on the screen and it will return whether the button was clicked or not. In our case, let's translate a bit downwards and call the function UI text button. The button is there, but it cannot be interacted with because the mouse input is already used for controlling the game. So we need to tell the engine that this script is requesting exclusive UI interactivity. We can do this with the UI make interactive function, which will bring up the mouse pointer and redirect input to this script as long as we keep calling the function every frame. Now we can actually click the button. Let's finally add a variable to remember if the OK button was clicked and in that case immediately return from the draw function. This will hide the user interface since it's no longer drawn. It will also return input to the game since the UI make interactive function is no longer called. This implicit form of control, where something happens only as long as you keep doing it every frame, is used a lot in the Teardown scripting API, not only for user interfaces, but also for other things, so you might want to get used to it. In the next part, we'll use multiple scripts and let them communicate using the registry. We'll also learn how to work with persistent save game data to create a high score.